Hey everybody, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. As you know, Fusion is constantly updating and evolving and usually getting better. And that's the case with this video today. I wanted to do an update to a previous video that I did about making a uh, paper template to be able to cut copes on sheet metal. So I'll put a link up to that video in the description and try to pop a card in here. But basically in that video, what I did is I, I revolved um, about 95% of a circle, created a contour flange based on that, and then created my cope after that. But I had to plan ahead a little bit on that one. Um, I had to decide where my my split was going to go, uh, for, you know, for the for the gap that was going to be in there, and how I was going to go about creating it. So we've got some new sheet metal functionality that will allow us to take a regular part and convert it to a sheet metal part, and that will help us in the workflow on this particular example. So let's take a look at how we could go about doing that with these little sketch lines that I have on screen right now. So instead of creating the extrude like I did previously, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the pipe command. So from the create menu, I'm going to choose to create a pipe. And I only want one of these lines to be selected. And you see as I hover my mouse over it, it selects everything. So I'm just going to go and uncheck the chain selection. Choose the part where I want the piping to appear. And then I'm going to give it its section size. Let's call it a two inch piece of pipe or tubing, and then give it a, a, a thickness of 0 0.095. And we'll go ahead and make a new body out of that, and I'll hit OK. Now once I do that, my sketch disappears, no worries, we can go get that back. I'm just gonna come back to my sketches folder, expand that out, and click on the eye symbol to turn the visibility back on. Another little change that's happened in Inventor over time. And I wanna do the pipe command again, so I'm just gonna choose Create and Pipe, and choose my second line that I wanna make. Now in this case, it doesn't need to be hollow. I'm not gonna use both sides of that, or both inner and outy of that uh, tube, so that's okay. Um, and I do want this to be a new body. So I'll go ahead and hit okay to that new body. It didn't go far enough through, and that's all right as well. I'll turn my sketch visibility off. I'm just gonna do a press pull on this face and pull it the rest of the distance that it needs to go. So that's plenty far for that to be able to create the cope. And then now I'm gonna use the same uh, methodology, methodology that I've done in the past. I'm going to go modify and I'm going to choose to split a face. So split the inside face with the splitting tool of that. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And I think I can do it both at the same time. So let's go ahead and do split face one more time. Let's split the outer face again using the same splitting tool. Go ahead and hit OK. And now I can go turn this body off. So uh, I'm going to do a press pull here first of all. And I'm going to go to the inside. I'm going to click on that region and type in minus 0 0.095 to get my outer split. And then there should just be a little sliver that's left. And we'll go grab that again as well. And then I'll do minus 0 0.095 one more time. And there I have uh, a piece of coped tubing that we could put in a uh, fourth axis laser. And we could cut this for an interference free fit uh, if we wanted to weld this or do something like that. Now, one of the questions I've gotten over and over again in the previous video is, could I do a cam tool path for this? And the answer is uh, not really. You could try to fake this using the 2D contour wrapped tool path, but that's a milling tool and not a cutting tool path like a laser water jet plasma. So as soon as you try to use one of those uh, 2D cutting, as the name implies 2D cutting, Fusion doesn't know how to handle this 3D pipe like that, and it can't do a uh, continuous cut around the outside diameter of, of a part. So let's hope that uh, that functionality arrives someday, but right now that day is not here. I can't quite turn this part into a sheet metal part yet because it can't unfold. There's no start and stop point. So I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna go move this around a little bit, and I just wanna create a sketch down here on this face. Now I know I wanna go on this red axis, or red X axis because that's what I was paying attention to. So um, <clears throat> I just, uh, I'll just start a line. I don't have to be super careful with this. Come over here and then come back down. So there's kind of my triangle. Now, just like I did in the previous video, we could kind of create another um, reference, like a vertical reference here. I'll make that a construction line. And then let's go ahead and make these things symmetric. So I will come and use the symmetry constraint click on the two things I want to be symmetric and the, the entity I want them to be symmetric about. And then I can go ahead and dimension the angle between these lines. So 
let's say that this split is like five degrees. Now, typically I would like to constrain this. Um, I would give it a length or distance, but in this case, we're just making a rip and it doesn't notice. It doesn't change the section that's being cut through the pipe. So we're okay there. I'll just leave it at that for now. I'm going to finish my sketch. And then now I'm going to just use the regular extrude and I can just grab that one little region right there and pull it all the way through. And instead of a distance, I'm going to say through all and I'll go ahead and hit okay. So now I've got a part with a split in it and that will allow me to convert this part over to sheet metal. So to do that, I'm going to switch to the sheet metal environment and then we're going to find a command in here. Um, in fact, I didn't even look at this first. Here it is. The drop down is convert to sheet metal. And it wants to know what the source is. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on this part and say, there's my source. And I could pick the rule that I want to work from. So I'm going to, I'm going to pick something and notice if I were to grab this, uh, say, uh, steel inch rule. When I hit OK, um, before I do that, it says that the thickness will be changed to be 0 0.095. So it's picked up on the thickness of the part that I created. And again, remember to go back. And before you do this, edit your rule to have a K factor of uh, one in there, I believe is what we want so that it doesn't uh, take into account shrink or stretch for your paper template. And we'll go ahead and click OK. Now I've got my uh, sheet metal part and now I'm able to go ahead and easily create a sheet metal flat pattern from this. So I'm going to say create flat pattern, just choose my inside face, hit OK. And now we have the same sort of result right there. There's our sheet metal uh, kind of template that we could take in print and wrap around a tube and use that for cutting if you wanted to go that way. So just wanted to do a quick update to talk about the ability to convert a part into a sheet metal part. One of the handy uses for this tool is to bring in uh, sheet metal parts from other CAD systems should you get one. So you could get one from another system that wasn't natively created in Fusion. And then you can use this tool to convert it to a sheet metal part that you can then flatten out in Fusion. So hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.